If you've been reading vision novels for any length of time, then the following is something that will inevitably have happened to you at some point or another. This is not fun! It really isn't! Very often when reading vision novels, we're forced to waste a ton of time struggling with the systems of the game just to be able to get on with the story that we want to be reading. I'm talking about all the times we have to skip through introductionary portions, because that's the only way to get to the other routes that we haven't read yet, or hanging over some guide on game facts because the VN keeps tossing random unavoidable dead ends at you, or just skipping back to the point where you last left off because you accidentally lost your save file, etc, etc. Whenever this stuff happens, it completely ruins your immersion in the story, and it also just plain wastes your time. Every minute a VN asks you to argue with its mechanics is a minute that you could spend doing literally anything else. And to me, all of this seems quite unnecessary, as I think most of these problems could be pretty easily avoided. So in this three-part series, I'm gonna go through some of the most common problems I've seen with vision novel mechanics, and how to avoid them. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at choices and branching paths in VNs. Then in the second part, we're gonna discuss how to best utilize dead ends in vision novels. Then in the final video, we're gonna go over how to minimize time-wasting mechanics. Now just one thing as a tiny disclaimer. I've never actually been involved in the development of any vision novel myself, so these aren't exactly the opinions of some well-trained game designer. This is just me expressing my personal thoughts as a vision novel reader. Nothing more, nothing less. So with the intro finished, please lean back as I spend the next few minutes of your life complaining about some truly, truly horrible first world problems. Choices and branching paths can be pretty powerful tools of storytelling. It allows the reader to feel like they have a certain level of control over the plot, and that it's their actions that make the story unfold in the way they want to. Or, alternatively, that it was their mistakes that made the story play out in a way they didn't want. And, naturally, it also allows the reader to pick and choose which part of the novel they want to experience, and still feel like they got a complete story. Basically, when they are used well, I think that choices can be a huge benefit to vision novels, and it's something I'm strongly in favor of. When they are used well... See, way too often, I feel like a lot of VNs seem to just force in a system of choices, just for the sake of having them. It's like some developers seem to feel obligated to include branching paths, simply because they are making a vision novel. I think this is the completely wrong way of going about it. Because first off, I think it's perfectly fine to not have any branching paths at all. Some of the best VNs I've read so far are completely linear. But secondly, and more importantly, I don't think it's just completely pointless to include choices in VNs just for the sake of having them. Oftentimes, I think it actually makes the game significantly worse. A perfect example would be this little moment in Ever17. Just to set the stage of what is going on here while avoiding spoilers as much as possible, at this moment, the characters are trapped several hundred meters below the surface in an underwater facility, and in order to escape, they need a password that has been encoded into this piece of paper. There's a total of nine possible choices, and you only get three attempts to find the right answer. If you fail, the story then will continue, but you will get an unavoidable dead end a few hours later in the story. By the way, you might as well buckle up. This is my favorite example of poorly implemented VN mechanics, and I'm going to be referring to this moment a lot throughout these videos. So why exactly is this such bad design? Well, for starters, it's basically completely arbitrary. Look at the options that are available to you. Turn it over. Turn it upside down. Wad it up. How are you supposed to know which one of these are more correct than the others? The short answer is... you can't. 
you can't use logic to predict what the correct choice is in this situation. So your best bet is to either use a walkthrough or just guess. I see two significant problems with this. One, it takes away control from the reader, and two, it makes the novel more difficult to finish. Let me explain. Do you remember how I said the appeal of choices in games, to a large extent, was that it gives the reader a feeling of being able to affect how the story plays out? Well, this moment doesn't give that at all. If anything, it does the opposite. It makes the reader feel like they don't have any control over the story, since you cannot accurately guess how it will affect future events in the plot. Second problem, which is the more important one, it makes the novel more difficult to finish. See. Very often, routes in vision novels will have one correct ending, which you must reach in order to unlock later portions of the story. Ever 17 does this as well, it's only the final story arc that properly explains the mystery that has been building up throughout the novel, and it's locked away until you reach the correct ending of all four routes prior to it. This means that, in order to see the full story and reach a genuinely conclusive ending to Ever 17, you must finish all the story paths, and you also must get this one choice right. So it is not exactly something you just want to guess the right answer to. I've heard some people argue that this isn't such a big issue, as you could just pull up a walkthrough and have the answer given to you. I have two problems with this line of reasoning. First off, no game, vision novel or otherwise, should ever require the use of a separate walkthrough to finish. If it does, then it's just terribly designed to begin with. I'm sorry, but it just is. If nothing else, because a lot of players, including myself, prefer to not use guides to avoid potential spoilers. And secondly, the option of using a walkthrough might not be available to you. What if you happen to not have any internet access? Or, what if you happen to be playing a VN that has just been released, and there just hasn't been enough time for anyone to even write a walkthrough? Well, in either of those cases, you're gonna end up being very frustrated for the rest of your evening. So how could we have done this differently? Well, when creating branching storylines, I think it's really important to always ensure that the reader can have a decent idea of how their choices are going to affect the story, that they are not just forced to guess what the correct answer is. Going back to the paper choice in Ever 17 again, imagine this scenario. Say that the characters had realized that the code was on the paper, but the player character was not the one given the task of cracking the code. Instead, you're given the choice of picking someone else from your crew to decrypt the text. Instead of simply picking something from a random set of nonsense, now you would have to try and figure out who is best qualified for the job. Do you pick Sora, because she is an employee at a facility and thereby should be more familiar with the security systems used at the station? Or is the correct answer you, because she has studied computer engineering and should know a fair amount about encryption? It would make the reader really think back about what they've learned about these characters, and more importantly, it gives a logical answer to the question one which the reader can figure out if they are clever enough. And quite frankly, if you are afraid that your readers might still find your branching paths too confusing, despite your best efforts to give them as many breadcrumbs as possible, then I don't think there is any shame in simply shipping your VN with a walkthrough built in. Mirror Moon did this for the translation of Fate Stay Night, and I've never heard anyone complain about that. Now, it's important to note that, in the example above, there are still going to be some readers who will get the question wrong no matter what you do, and they are now locked to a dead end. This is a problem in and of itself which we have not fixed yet, but this is something I'm going to talk about more in the next video. Speaking of dead ends, so far we've only talked about choices that have lasting consequences, which they don't actually need to. I think it's entirely feasible to implement choices that will only affect individual scenes, without changing how the story plays out long term. These can be handy for making the novel seem less linear than it actually is, without being forced to write hundreds of pages of text to fill out an entire tree of different branching paths. However, even when making these tiny, non-impactful choices, I think they should still be written in a way that gives the reader a general clue of what their outcome is going to be. 
or in this case, that there won't be any particularly important outcome. For example, say that the characters meet at noon and start talking about how that's not the best time of day to use the phrase good morning, and then the reader is given the choice of which other greeting they should be using instead. This doesn't feel all that significant in the grand scheme of things, so it probably should not be the moment that the term is the future of the characters' entire lives. What's important is that, again, we've ensured that the reader will have a decent idea of how their choices are going to affect the story. Moving on, yet a third way of implementing choices could be solely to heighten reader attention, while having virtually no impact on the story at all. For this next bit, I'm simply going to talk about the deduction sequence from Lucid 9, because it's an excellent example of this. Towards the finale of Lucid 9, there's a section where the main character sits down and tries to figure out who the culprit of the novel is. At its core, it's actually just one long exposition dump, to unveil the answers to the mystery. However, throughout this sequence, the novel also asks the reader a series of questions about the puzzle so far. It's there to test the reader, to see if they themselves can solve the mystery on their own. You can't actually fail during this section. If you pick any incorrect choice, then the novel simply explains why your guess is incorrect, and then progresses normally. Basically, the choices during this sequence doesn't actually affect the story in any way, but it still makes the audience lean back and really think about the mystery for themselves, which is going to be far more engaging for most readers than simply having the novel force-feed them all the answers. I think it's a really nifty trick, as it lets the people who are able to get all of the questions right feel pretty smart about themselves, while not unnecessarily punishing the readers who don't. Plus you get an achievement if you get all of the answers correct, which is nice. There you have it. Those are some of my personal thoughts on how choices in vision novels can be best implemented. Like I said previously, choices can be a huge benefit to vision novels, but they shouldn't be forced in just for the sake of having them. If they serve no purpose, then they're better left out completely in favor of simply creating a linear VM. Furthermore, arbitrary choices will often be an outright detriment to the novel, since they will rarely add anything to the story, and it will also make it more difficult for the reader to actually finish the novel. Next time, we're gonna look into what happens after you pick an incorrect choice, and how dead ends can be written to feel like a tiny reward, rather than a punishment for the reader. So until then, take care. That special day.